Gardens Radio. And I'm delighted to welcome Nikki Creel in the studio. Hi, Danny. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing? You're surviving the craziness that's going on in the studio. I still haven't been offered the biscuits. That I oh, no, they're yet. just sitting there, aren't they? James, open the biscuits. <laughs> I do apologise. How rude of us. Definitely. I definitely blame James for that. Right. Nikki Creel, social media guru, author of How to Twist. Sorry. How to Twitter. Yes, yeah, she's holding it. How to Twitter for Business Success. I, I do know. I'm just having a senior moment. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into social media. I got into social media by default, I guess. Or I got. I was dragged into kicking and screaming. <laughs> I, I had a, a small business doing um, life coaching and I, I'm a master NLP practitioner and I needed to market my business. And everybody said, you must be on Twitter. Twitter's the place to be. And I joined Twitter and then ran away within a few days because it just frightened me. I didn't know what was going on. And it was a few months later, then I thought, well, I really need to get to grips with this. And from the moment I did that, doors have been opening for me and it has changed my life. I think what's, what's lovely is you describe yourself on your website as a self-confessed technophobe, because <laughs> I think most people feel they have to be a technologically minded person or a techno expert to engage no. with social media social media is all about people uh, there's a social aspect of it it's not the technology is the enabler so it's just something that you need to learn how to use it but it, you need to understand people so you launched yourself out there you got very involved with social media you're now a social media guru you give training etc and not long ago you wrote your first book how was that it, it was really good and what's lovely is i keep on having people who've read the book uh, raving on about it well tweeting me how much they're enjoying the book um, and people have sent me pictures of my book all over the world well you started a little sort of campaign didn't you well it, it, it happened by or default did it, evolve? it evolved because the first first thing was one of my read well it was she was a facebook fan bought my book um, and then she sent me pictures of my book in Phoenix, Arizona. And she actually went to a boutique hotel, managed to persuade them to open up parts that are no, not normally open to the public. And so as a result, I've got pictures of my book on a cowboy saddle and next to a cactus and all sorts of interesting things. And from then on, people got competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Power Including of social you, media. Danny. <laughs> yes, I seem to remember I managed to orchestrate one from a hot air balloon for you. Yes, and also one um, uh, in a wicker co- coffin. Uh, one in a wicker coffin, yes. <laughs> I'll just skim over that one. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Oh, well, so now you've done your book and um, you've got uh, an event that's coming up. Yes. Tell I'm, us about that. I'm running a social media summit. It's the second time that we're running it. It's it's for small business owners because I think there's so much about social media for corporates um, and people who've got massive budgets and can spend thousands and thousands of pounds a month. Whereas there's a real need for small business owners to to get to grips with social media in a very practical, no-nonsense, down-to-earth type of advice from industry experts so I've got together a number of speakers including D. Bick who is the UK's best-selling author for marketing for small business books um, and Thomas Power who he set up e-academy which was the UK's first online uh, business um, community be- even before LinkedIn was established oh um, and I've got somebody from Henley Business School, Stuart Morris, who's also going to be talking about social selling. Um, so the, those are my speakers. And then we've got lots of practical workshops. So I'm going to be doing how to use Instagram for selling. And um, we've got you know how to get your customers quickly using Twitter, WordPress, SEO for beginners, uh, and a load, load more of workshops. I could list them all off. <laughs> yeah, some, something for everyone. <laughs> yes. So I was just going to ask you, I mean, social media, it's completely changed the world, really, as we know it, hasn't it? You know, how we deliver news, how information, I mean, for people like us, you know, doing the radio or TV or anything like that, or, uh, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about it? Well, I love, what I love about social media is it's enabled small business owners to actually be able to become bigger without spending a massive amount of money so it's, if you understand how to use it strategically if you also understand that people do business with people and it's forming relationships so it's not automating everything and spamming everybody online it can open so many doors um i was going to say most of my radio interviews 
Um, in fact, I'd met you on Twitter before I actually met you in real life. Yes, that's true. And then ironically, our, our children are, are, are good friends. Yes, <laughs> so, that's right. which, which we only discovered after that, yeah, exactly. which is interesting. Um, but you, you form relationships with people and that, that enables things to happen. And some of the, when I was new to Twitter and some of my name tweets that I did at that point, like um, is some quality street leftover cheese and a glass of wine a balanced diet <laughs> <laughs> that's in there that's how inane they were yeah, established but, relationships with people who sure. i now do business who forever promoting me putting me forward and they they're wonderful friendships that i've developed through through because lo- lots of people i speak to are really quite skeptical still about twitter for instance yeah. and they say oh it's just all about what somebody's having for breakfast some celebrity and I keep saying, no, read Vicky Creel's book <laughs> and you'll find out actually how it can help your business. I think Twitter is probably the gateway drug for getting involved with, with social media. It's, it, it frightens a lot of people and there's a lot of fear involved with Twitter, but it's probably the easiest one to get to grips with. So I was going to say, with because with the variety of social media that's out there, yeah. so... Uh, I mean, you've just written the book about Twitter. What, yeah. What's you know? I suppose everybody's asking you when's your next book coming out and yes. what is it going to be about. I'm actually in the process of writing two books: one on LinkedIn, um, really about how to do use it as a small business, and I got invited to the UAE by the Crown Prince, which Ooh, came <laughs> through, through LinkedIn, which was great fun. Yeah. And um, the other one is in in. Uh, collaboration with somebody who's going to actually be at my social media summit Andy Britnell um, and we're writing one on blogging oh on lovely blogging. okay so Facebook over Twitter there's always that argument and that people ask you know do you prefer Facebook do you prefer Twitter or should you be using one in one way and one in another I think they're each different and if you try and use something like Hootsuite and just spew out um, things to all platforms you're missing a trick because they've each got their own personality each got a different slightly different way of of dealing with them but you really need to have a strategy which is beyond the actual channel or platform that you're on so you need to actually think about how you're going to use it and what you want to accomplish from it so i mean so facebook is the biggie um 60 of the uk population have a facebook profile so you can't ignore facebook um, no. but it's becoming very much more pay to play um, model whereas twitter you can do a lot of things for free instagram is also quite an interesting one i was one. gonna say <laughs> is that up, the up and coming yeah yeah <laughs> well it's it's got actually more people using instagram than twitter so it's, they reach 300 million um people using twitter users monthly users um beginning of this year end of last year beginning of this year so it's growing very very rapidly uh, but LinkedIn for business, you can make. Uh, I've had such great leads that have come through LinkedIn, other than you know, sort of like the one that I've just mentioned. Yes, exactly. Uh, they're all quite powerful, and it's it's actually learning how to use them, you know, sort of in the best way possible. And it is, you know, it's very much, isn't it, a case of if you're a business, ignore social media at your peril. Well, the thing is that. People are talking and people are asking for recommendations. They're asking about your products. And if you're not on social media, you're missing out on the conversation. So you're missing out on the opportunities. But you're also missing out because people will say bad things, you know, whether you're on Twitter or have a Twitter account or not, if, you, if you're giving a bad service. And wouldn't you rather find out about it and be able to turn that customer who's got a complaint into a loyal customer? Because quite often that's all it takes is somebody to listen to a complaint. But uh, Twitter in particular is very, really powerful um, for getting getting things across yes no that leads me to my question when you say you know wouldn't you rather know if somebody's saying bad things about you is one of the issues with young people today is all that they're born into social media but it's not you know putting your dirty laundry out there for everybody to see yeah what, what would you say to um, young people? i think it's you have to realize that when you're using any social media platform you are publishing and the rules regarding publishing applied so that's defamation and slander there are things like advertising restrictions like you can't overclaim products um obviously you can't lie um can't be racist 
on, on social media. You can actually be taken to court. And in, in fact, I, was, I, I thought of a little story, which you, you probably know about, which is um, Justine Sacco. Did you hear about her? She was a PR, she was the chief PR officer for IAC in New York, so a big communications company. And she did a tweet just before she was flying from New York to South Africa to Cape Town. And she was in Heathrow, and she did a tweet which said, off to Africa, I hope I don't get AIDS, but hey, I, I'm, I'm white, I'm okay, I'll be white, I'm white. Oh, okay. my word. <laughs> okay, now she had 170 followers, and most of her tweets were actually of a similar caliber, like she'd bad-mouthed a German person in first class saying about his BO, which she complained about bad teeth so in London. No so she was, sense, she was yes, so she, she was... That was fairly typical of the type of things she posted and didn't think much of 170 followers. It got picked up. And because she was the chief PR officer <laughs> for a big communication How company, not to do your PR. by the time she landed in Cape Town, she had lost her job and has Justine landed yet was trend, trending on Twitter. So while she got on her plane in the 11 hours, so much ha- happened. Wow. Okay. And she had no idea. <laughs> That's, uh, that is quite a powerful story. Nikki, if people want to find out more about your social media summit, where do they go to for information? The best place is to visit um, socialmediasummit.biz. It's a website set up especially for the Social Media Summit. Or you can go to my website. I've got links that go through it. Through it and my website is Nikki Creel. It's N-I-C-K-Y-K-R-I-E-L.com. Nikki Creel, thank you very much for coming into the studio.